Hi, this is Chris Schomburg, and I'm your instructor for AC-DC, or Alternating Current and DC Current. And we're actually, right now, we're looking at the lab. And this is actually the lab in the background. You can see that we have a lot of these blue, big blue armatrol stations. And that's something that we're going to learn quite a bit about throughout this semester. And I hope you really enjoy learning about them. I also have one right here. And you can see just close up how it basically has all the DC stations that we have here. It's kind of some of the technology that we have. We actually have these guys, which are jumpers, that'll actually go lead-wise into each one of these components, and we have main components here. But today we're going to actually discuss something a little different. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk about circuits that we can build with our hands. And so this right here, now you can actually see, this is one of the circuits that I built and I actually have it right here in person. So this is the circuit right here. And I can pull it out and you can see that it actually has all those components on there. It's pretty cool, it's pretty nifty. It has a bunch of push buttons on there. And so the reason for all those push buttons is to actually be able to play a, a sound or music. And this right here is another example of that. And I have this one right here you can see it's on a bigger display here i like this because this breadboard is a lot bigger and we can do a lot more with it than just a simple 555 piano is what we are going to call this or the tinkercad piano so we're going to go ahead we're going to look at a couple videos of that this is in real life how you would actually build these guys so we're going to look at that in real life and we're going to see how it would build so bear with me I'm modifying it there by changing the potentiometer. It actually went to a higher pitch after changing the potentiometer. And then I have another one that I just want you to notice too. This will have a little bit of feedback and we'll notice that also when we build it in Tinkercad and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Alright, so that's both of them. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to model this virtually. Now what's really interesting is if you go ahead and, let's see here, we're going to go to Tinkercad. If you go ahead and you were to build this in real life, it, it would sound just like those two. And if we build it in Tinkercad, I want to compare the differences. And so what are the differences between building it in Tinkercad, this is a modeling software, it's a similar software to, you know, like if you're wanting to draw something up, it's like a schematic. But in this case, it actually, you can build it just like you would build it. So it's like a pictorial diagram, but you can actually test it and, and modify it. There are limits to this. The so software only allows you to be able to modify things or work with things that are below differential equations. Above differential equations, it doesn't really work. And we can have a long conversation about that if you're curious about what works and what doesn't on the this software. But let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, I have my 9-volt battery. I did pull all of the materials first because I felt like just for the sake of time, it's going to be beneficial. So with the 9-volt battery, I always plug in on this guy the negative rail, and I always plug in the positive rail. Now, you might be thinking, okay, so how is this different than reality? Well, in reality, if you did something like this, it would pull current and voltage right away. And that's not something that we really want. We really want to actually minimize the amount of current that is pulled right away. But in this case, we doesn't do anything until I actually hit that start simulation button. That being said, it's not going to work until I actually hit that start simulation button. Scoot this out and we can scoot in a little bit here. And we can actually look at a little bit more. So the negative flow, so the uh, electron is negative, and the negative terminal is going to be negative as well. So if we have two negatives, they're going to be the same charge, so they're going to oppose each other. So we're going to get current to flow in this direction, okay? 
And so then we're going to go to our speaker, which is our main part of this particular circuit because we're building a 505 timer piano. Okay, so we're going to put in a negative side on in the negative or ground and then a positive side up here. I'm going to actually jumper this. I'm going to jumper it a little ways and I'm going to label this red so that we know that it's a high signal coming in. Now, a piezoelectric speaker, I would I can talk for hours about that for you, but basically all that it means is that it actually has a positive and a negative terminal. It is polarized, so it has only a positive and a negative, so you have to make sure you get those right. Okay, the 555 timer, again, is another thing that I could talk a lot about. What we're going to do is we're going to bridge it between, see this gap right here? This side is all connected, and this side is all connected, but they're not interconnected. That allows us to use these integrated circuits like 555 timers. Now, the first terminal right here is, is it has a dot on it, and there's an oval in the front so that you know that that's terminal 1. That's terminal 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. There are 8 pins on this 555 timer. Now, 555 timers are actually quite interesting. They're, uh, they actually have the ability to create a, from a DC signal an AC signal. They have oscillator circuits within them. They have all these resistors and all those kinds of things inside of them. They're really amazing. Okay, so we're going to put in our capacitor. And our capacitor here, this is a mylar capacitor. It's really not polarized, so it's not a, what we would consider electrolytic capacitor. I actually have it at 0.1 microfarads, and that's what's recommended. It's also in your kits, it's a 104. So we're, we're putting that between one and two, pins one of two of the 555 timer. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put in a jumper, pins two to pin six, and I'm gonna leave that as green. I'm also gonna put in a ground pin right here. The 555 timer needs both power and ground, so we're putting in ground into the first pin, which is the ground, ground pin. Then we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna jumper this, okay? So we're gonna actually jumper this guy out, and I never know how many, how many to go. Let's go six and see. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put in a push button. Now this push button is gonna go just like the 555 timer, it's gonna bridge the gap there. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab the first resistor right here. And we're gonna go from this point up, I'm one too many, I need to go to six. So let's go ahead and let's put that into, right there, or there's five actually. Here we go, so now we have this as a gold symbol. I'm indicating this as gold because it's not really a low signal and it's not really a high signal, it's kind of in between. So it's going to the one pin right here and then this is then going to the to be or not to be pin or the to be pin and then that pin is then going up to here to, this, to the seventh terminal of the 555 timer. And we're gonna actually jumper it by going ahead, going to the power signal with our resistor, our 1K resistor. Now this is a 6.2 kilo ohm resistor, and this is a 1K resistor, okay? Now, we're almost done with the start, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jumper this, and so we're gonna give it power, so now the 555 timer has power, and then we also wanna actually put it at the reset button. So we're gonna give power to the reset button in this case. And so now we have power going into the reset button, and the 555 timer. Now it's gonna be noisy and it's gonna have a lot of what I would call feedback, but it should work. Yeah, it's working just fine, but it did have a lot of feedback. So now the easy part, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in all of these push buttons first, and I'm just gonna put a space in between each one. So I'm gonna zoom in real quick so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just putting one space in between each of the push buttons. And then we're going to hook it up, okay? So that should be pretty simple. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put one space in between each of these push buttons. There we go. There we go. And there we go, okay. So we have a space between each of the push buttons, good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually put in all the resistors. So the next resistor right here that we're gonna use is a 390 resistor. Then we're gonna use a 910 resistor. Then we're gonna use a 1K resistor. Then we're gonna use a 110 resistor. 
and we're going to use a 1 oh, or 1.3 kilo ohm resistor, and then we're going to use a 1.5 kilo ohm resistor. And I might have actually mispronounced the 1.1. It should be 1.1 kilo ohms. So now if we zoom in, we can actually see what we're doing. We're connecting each of these 2B pins to a resistor. So those are all connected all the way up. Okay. And then this last one goes to the 2B of that one. Okay. Now the last piece that we have is we're going to actually put a jumper from the 1A position on each of the toggle switches. And that's pretty simple to do. We're just basically connecting them all together in what I would consider somewhat of a strand. Okay, so what we have here, but it's, it's a little bit more sophisticated than a strand, but we'll just talk a little bit here. Okay, so basically what we have is now we're, I'm changing the color so that everybody can recognize this is the same jumper that we did before. We're just extending out to different push buttons. How is it a little different and more sophisticated than a series? Well, if we think about that, if we press the button at a certain spot, that's actually going to connect and short between here and here at that spot. Now, if I were to press it at this point, it's short between here and here, and we may not get the last part. So it matters where we press the button. And so it's kind of, it's like a, in series, but it's also kind of a little different because they have all these push buttons here. Okay. So we're going to play it right with, with this, the way it's configured. And then we're going to show you a little bit of difference to, to minimize the effects that we see. So let's play and just see. Okay. So if I press down and hold, I get a button there. So that's actually pretty good. Now, this is not what we heard in reality. We heard a lot higher tone, first of all. And we didn't hear almost any feedback. So one thing that I have figured out that works to basically, the quickest way to minimize the feedback is to put in a diode in parallel with our speaker. So if we just put that diode right here, it then allows only current that is in one direction to flow. If it's going in the other direction, it won't flow. It also limits the, the, the voltage and limits the resistance and the, limits the current basically coming through. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try it again. You can hear we barely hear any feedback. Okay, now we're getting an actual signal, okay? So now I'm gonna just kinda uh, show you a little bit about how this is actually really a piano. So if we think about this, if we go Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, and then back to Do. We actually have our signal here. And so that is actually a working 555 piano. Again, uh, this is called uh, Tinkercad. It's for you to explore, for you to kind of tinker with, for you to kind of learn as much as you want about circuits. And I think this is a good demo to actually show you that. I hope you uh, really enjoy electronics and I hope you enjoy, you know, STEM based learning. Hopefully you'll subscribe and hopefully you'll continue to watch more of these videos. Thanks.